Guys, this is Brian with TurpMechanic.com. Today I want to talk to you about the 10, the 10 main chores that you have to do. I don't want to call them a chore because this is fun if you actually care about your lawn. These are the 10 action items that you need to take care of in your lawn in spring in order. Before I go into the entire list, I want you to know right off the bat that I have done all 10 of these things, plus many others, and I literally have a video on every single one of these, a dedicated video to every one of these topics. I'm gonna to link to every single one of those in the description below. So if you want more information on any particular action item step, go into the description and watch the dedicated video. Now, let's jump right into the list. At the very end of winter, going into spring, this changes, the date changes depending on where you live. At the end of winter is when your grass starts breaking dormancy. Some places it's gonna be in February, some it's March, some it's in April. Just before your grass breaks winter dormancy, go out into the lawn with a power rake or a de-thatcher and run it all over the lawn to score and to rip up all of the dead material sitting on the soil surface, or at least a lot of it, and then get it out of there. None of that stuff is breaking down because your soil temperatures are too cold, and when you get it out there, you actually expose the soil so that you can properly fertilize and apply pre-emergence to the lawn. If you're gonna seed, you can actually get seed to the soil where you want it. Now, having said that, I actually don't recommend seeding in the spring, and I'll get to that later. The next step is right as your grass is breaking dormancy. So after the first step, go ahead and rent yourself a core aerator. Basically every town in this country has a tool rental place. Just give them a call and ask to rent an aerator. You can take it home in a truck, the back of an SUV. I personally am going to rent one from a place in town where they're gonna give me access to a trailer as well. Get that core aerator to the house. If you want to, you can hire a company to do it for you. It'll cost a bit more, but aerate your lawn. In the early part of spring, your grass wants to put on new roots. It's the natural process. If you aerate the lawn, it's going to make that process work better. You're going to relieve soil compaction that's happened over winter. If you live up north, it's really common to have like waterlogged soil uh, that has caused an anaerobic environment. Getting air down into the soil makes a major difference. Now, right after you aerate the lawn, you want to top dress it. This is the best time ever anywhere in the country to top dress your lawn is right after aeration. And I recommend top dressing with things that are not exactly water soluble. So if you're gonna put down uh, trace elements in the form of green sand or azomite, this is the time to do it. If you wanna put biochar onto the lawn, this is the time to do it because all of this stuff goes down into the holes. Earthworm castings, if you got deep pockets, all of this stuff goes into the soil profile deeper than like the top. Like you don't want it on the top, you want this stuff deep down. So apply this stuff if you got the money and the time right after you aerate. Now once all of this top dressing is down on the ground, this is when you're gonna wanna pull out your liquid spreader and put some soluble mycorrhiza into the tank along with some humic acid. Then go and spread it all over the lawn. This stuff goes into the soil and gives the root systems of your lawn the ability to uptake nutrients and water more efficiently throughout the year. That biochar, if you were able to get it down, also helps your lawns tap into moisture better, especially if you have sandy soil, the biochar holds on to moisture that, the, that will just drain right out of your soil. Depending on your weather, after a few weeks go by, then it's time to go ahead and think about your first fertilizer application. We're gonna be doing that in tandem with our pre-emergent application. We want to prevent weeds later in the year and we want to support spring growth with fertilizer. Neither of these two products should be applied to the lawn no matter where you live before soil temperatures get to at least 55 degrees. Most weeds start germinating at 55 degrees as the soil temperatures are coming up and that's when almost all grass types really start emerging from dormancy. Cool season grasses will emerge earlier than that so wait until the soil is 55 degrees, not the air. I should also note that if you are gonna put down a pre-emergent, that you cannot plan on putting grass seed down during the spring. You're gonna have to wait until the end of summer after that pre-emergent has worn off, which by the way, is the best time to put the seed down in the first place. So that's no big deal. With the pre-emergent and the fertilizer down on the ground, then it's time to do a major irrigation session to get all of that product down into the soil, into the root zone. At this point, you're gonna go into a pattern of mowing the lawn two times every week. 
I don't care how short or tall you keep your grass. If you cut two times every single week, your grass is literally going to thicken out and it's going to look spectacular all the time. By the time mid spring rolls around, this is when it's really important for most places around the country to apply hydrotain to the lawn. Hydrotain is a very specific product. I don't recommend people buy very specific products very often on this channel, but hydrotain is basically this crazy product that if you put it on your lawn and water it into the soil, it actually retains moisture in the soil. It, it uh, limits evaporative loss, so you don't have to water the lawn as much. By the time mid-spring rolls around, days are very long and temperatures are usually starting to climb. So hydrotain can really help your lawn perform with less water during the longest, hottest days of the year. During that same application, I do recommend applying some form of potassium. My choice is sulfate of potash, specifically sulfate of potash. It's an organic form or a natural OMRI listed form of potassium that goes under the lawn. It's gonna help your lawn harden itself off, uh, using that term loosely here. It's gonna harden itself off to perform better during the summer when cool season grasses are more stressed out and warm season grasses are growing vigorously. Next step is typically in the month of May. It kind of depends on the product that you're using, but May is a good time to apply just about any sort of grub preventative. We want to apply a grub preventative because we don't want grubs to start emerging from eggs in July and growing up eating our grass root systems and killing off sections of the lawn simply because we didn't prevent the problem in the first place. Typically healthy lawns have grubs, we just don't want an infestation of them. So if we apply a preventative, we're going to prevent the vast majority of them but not kill them all off. Do that in May. Now, by the time that late spring comes around, which could be in May, it could be late May, it could be early June, around this time, we wanna do one more fertilization app to push some extra growth during the springtime. And as our grass starts responding to that growth, we're gonna allow the grass to grow a little bit taller and move our lawnmower up and start cutting it at a taller setting and slightly less often, not a lot less often, slightly less often. You want the grass to be taller during the summer. For one, cool season grasses, you need the shade of a thicker, deeper um, leaf canopy of your grass. And for warm season grasses, those grasses are gonna be growing extremely fast during the summer. So if you allow your grass to grow taller and don't cut it way down every single time, you can actually keep up with the mowing without having to mow the grass every like two days or so. Also, by the time late spring happens, this is usually the best time of the year to apply a blanket application of weed killer. Now, this is only gonna apply to a select few of you out there who have a lot of weed pressure in the lawn. If we wait all the way into proper summer, into the high heat of summer, to apply weed killer, it's not going to be as effective. There are some specialty products that can work well in the summer for warm season grasses, but the vast majority of weeds are far easier killed in the months of May and June than they are in the months of July and August. For those warm season areas, this is also the time of the year to do any overseeding of warm season grass. This is also not gonna apply if you apply to pre-emergent because the pre-emergent will stop the grass seed from germinating. And many warm season grass types will self repair well. So if your lawn is like it is back here, I wouldn't overseed this. Overseeding a warm season lawn, the lawn really has to be sparse to have any major benefit. Typically a lawn that you see like behind me here, this is the month of February. If the lawn looks like this in the month of May and June, fertilizer is really all you need to fill it out. And that takes me to my last point, which really only applies to warm season grasses. Fertilize at the start of summer, the very, very end of June. Warm season grass types thrive in the summer and so long as they're getting adequate moisture, fertilizer is going to really help them have a healthy summer and fill in any thin spots that you have in the lawn. Now, like I said, all of these things I have videos on linked in the description below. Please take a look at that. There's even a couple extras in there that I've linked to that I didn't address in this video. But on top of those 10 steps, there's actually one ninja tip that really only the best lawns in the country do every single year without fail. 
and that has to do with pushing additional root mass in the lawn during the springtime when all of your grass wants to put on root mass in the first place. One of the best ways to increase root mass in our lawn during the spring is to apply cytokinins, which is a plant growth hormone commonly found in sea kelp. There's an enormous reason why the best lawns across the country use biostimulants of all kinds, but sea kelp in particular is what I'm talking about here. Make sure to watch the video that I've got linked up here in the corner to learn more about how you can use this product, which is actually pretty easy to find on store shelves, and apply it to your lawn. Because if you do, and you do all of these 10 steps, your lawn literally will be the best lawn on the block.